In this webcast, I will discuss the earliest events happening in plant life, how from a single cell an entire organism is built, and I will focus on how this process is controlled by genetic means. This is work that is carried out in my team at the University in Wageningen in the Netherlands. Plants are all around us, and they have been all around us for hundreds of millions of years, as for example can be seen in this artist rendition of North America 350 million years ago. Plants have remained the same in all of this time. So, whether we cut through a leaf, through a stem, or through a root, we will find three different types of tissues, and they're always arranged in a very similar way. So epidermal tissues cover the plant, vascular tissues are in the center of the plant, and ground tissues are found in between these. And in fact, the same arrangement can be found in fossils that were dated to the time of this picture. So this is a very old arrangement of tissues and therefore probably very fundamental to plant functioning. In addition to this tissue organization having remained constant for hundreds of millions of years, there is one more thing that is intimately connected to plant life that's, that has been around for the same number of years. And this is the presence of stem cell systems at both shoot and root that produce all the cells that build the organs, that build the stem and that build the root system. In both of these systems, whether shoot or root, stem cells highlighted in green make the cells for the organs while organizer cells in red control the activity of stem cells. In the absence of organizer cells, stem cells lose their identity. So these two cell types need to be organized right next to each other in order to form a functional stem cell system. As I indicated, these two phenomena are very old in plant biology and therefore very successful. And one of the goals that we set ourselves in my lab is to understand the fundamental mechanisms underlying these two arrangements, the tissue arrangements, but also the stem cell and organizer cell arrangement. And for this, we use very simple developmental model. We use the early embryo of the plant Arabidopsis thaliana, here shown on the left. During early embryogenesis, life unfolds from a single cell, the zygote that is shown as the black cell in the scheme on your right. In the zygote, a series of very predictable cell divisions transforms this single cell into a multicellular structure that has different types of cells, here indicated by the different colors. So for example, the green cells are vascular cells, whereas the yellow cells are ground tissue cells, and the red cell is the stem cell organizer. The formation of this pattern of cell types happens while the embryo is only about 50 cells in size. So we can already distinguish the different tissues, the stem cells and the organizer cell at that stage. And what we try to understand is what events lead up to that stage to form such a miniature plant. This process of embryogenesis happens inside the seed, which is in turn found within the fruit, as shown on your left. To give you a feeling for the dimensions, I have now shown you a few embryos, as well as a seed, next to a human hair. What you can see here is that these embryos are very small, and in fact, the formation of the first tissues even happens inside the embryo. So this has been a very challenging process to study, and progress has only been made in the last number of years because mostly of technical uh, challenges that could not be overcome before that. One of the entry points into studying this problem has been the identification of mutations that interfere with normal development. Here I am showing you a very famous mutant called Monopteros, in which the normal divisions that give rise to the different tissues, the vascular, ground tissue, but also to the organizer cell, are all disrupted, which is indicated here by different colors. Now, monopterous gene is therefore required for normal formation of the different tissues in the embryonic root. And in the past years, we have made some discoveries about the function of this monopterous gene. The monopterous protein that encodes is a transcription factor, a protein that binds the DNA and activates the expression of other genes. What we found 
is that this monopterous protein is not present in all of the cells that are affected in the monopterous mutant. In other words, the monopterous protein acts cell autonomously in controlling the yellow and green cells that will later form the stem cells for the ground tissue and vascular tissue, but it acts non-cell autonomously in the purple cell, which is the precursor for the organizer. Now remember, all of these cells divide abnormally when the monopterous protein is absent, but the monopterous protein only exists in the yellow and green cells. For this reason, some years ago we proposed a model in which monopterous controls the synthesis of signals that will be transported to the cell next to it to make sure that the organizer is formed in that cell. In the past years, we have used the or we have exploited the fact that monopterous is a transcriptional regulator to identify genes that are activated by it. And through this, we hope to find factors that control the different processes that are initiated the specification and division of tissues and stem cells, cell autonomously, but also the, contro the control of the specification and division of the organizer cell. And as indicated, this latter involves mobile signals that were until recently not identified. I will give you two examples of our recent findings that have allowed us to identify such a mobile signal and also have, identify have allowed us to identify a mechanism controlling the orientation of division in the stem cells. The first example I would like to give you is a gene that we recently described as TMO7, which stands for target of monopterous 7. This gene, whose activity is marked by the green nuclei in this embryo on your left, is activated directly by monopterous. Monopterous binds the promoter of this gene and activates its expression. But very surprisingly, when we localize the TMO7 protein, again in green in this picture, we find that the protein is not only found in the cells where the gene is active, but also in the cell next to it, the future organizer cell. When we mutate the TMO7 gene, this results in embryos that are unable to make a root which tells us that the TMO7 gene is critical for normal root development. And in other words, the transport of this protein from the future stem cells to the neighboring cell induces organizer cell identity. The second example I would like to give you is a case where we have identified a mechanism for tissue formation using controlled cell division orientation. On the top here, you see a series of embryos in 3D where the vascular tissue is highlighted in different colors. All individual cells are shown as balloons. The first picture on your left shows the initial stage where four vascular initial cells have been highlighted. The vascular system encompasses more than only four cells and in order to generate more cell files within that tissue cells need to divide along a predefined orientation, a very specific longitudinal axis. And this is what is shown in the subsequent pictures. Cells divide along one axis to generate more files within that tissue. We identified one of the genes activated by monopteros as TMO5 for target of monopteros 5, which turns out to be expressed exactly in those cells that need to undergo these oriented divisions. When we mutate the TMO5 gene, this results in abnormal longitudinal divisions exactly in those vascular tissues. Eventually, plants that lack the TMO5 gene are unable to make a vascular tissue post-embryonically. The cross sections on the right show you a normal wild type root in the top left and a mutant root below it the cells around the vascular tissue are marked with white asterisks and as you can see the TMO5 mutant lacks the vascular tissue altogether. So what this work tells us is that the local control of oriented cell division in the embryo is mediated by this TMO5 gene. Finally I would like to summarize what I have just mentioned to you. We have used the early embryo of Arabidopsis thaliana 
to address fundamental questions in plant biology. How are the different tissues made, but also how are these different cell types positioned relative to one another? We have used the monopterous transcription factor as an entry point in isolating genes that might mediate these functions. One of these, the genes activated by monopterous, TMO7, encodes a protein that is produced in the yellow and green embryo cells, but is then transported to the adjacent cell to induce organizer identity. And this is one of the mechanisms by which the stem cell and organizer cell are positioned right next to each other, which is a requirement for a functional stem cell niche. Secondly, I've shown you that the TMO5 gene is activated by monopterous to locally control cell division orientation and thereby transform a vascular initial population of four cells into a full vascular bundle. By systematically analyzing other functions in this process, we hope to identify the mechanisms underlying complex tissue formation in plants.